Shalom, shalom, and greetings to the daughters of Tazion. This afternoon, we're coming to you with another uh, teaching that Rayak hasn't asked me to teach to you daughters today. But before I begin this teaching, which is very, very special for the daughters of Tazion, we'd like to hear a selection from our young people, and they're going to quote scripture for us today. Now for our little ones. Oh, I blow the shofar. scripture verses by our three young daughters. I'm sorry, four. Oh, Saki, I'm sorry. Tifra, Hava, Sarai, and Hadassah. Shalom, shalom. My scripture, my scripture is going to be coming from Proverbs chapter 31, verse 10. Who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies? My second one is going to be coming from Matthew 7, verse 17. Even so, every tough tree bringeth forth tough fruit, but the corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. Shalom, shalom. My name is Sapar and I am 10 years old. Yai Baruch! Shalom, shalom. My name is Ahava and I am 13 years old and I'm going to be reading two scriptures for you today. My first scripture is coming from Colossians 3.23. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to Yahweh and not unto men. And my second scripture is coming from Proverbs 14 and 1. Every wise woman buildeth her house, but the foolish plucketh it down with her hands. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom, shalom. 
My name is Saria and I am 14 years old. And I bring you for you two scriptures that I chose. And my first scripture is coming from Peter, 1 Peter, chapter 5, verse 6. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of Yah, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon Yah, for he cares for you. My second scripture is Proverbs chapter 8, verse 35. For whosoever findeth me, findeth life, and shall obtain favor of Yah. But he that sinneth against me, wrong his own nephesh. And all they that hate me, loveth death. Shalom, shalom. Hallelujah. Shalom, my name is Hadassah and I am 15 years old and today I would like to share with you two scriptures. And my first scripture is coming from John chapter 14 verse 1 and it says, Let not your heart be troubled, ye believe in Yahweh, believe also in me. And my second scripture is coming from Psalms chapter 135 verse 3 and it says, Praise Yahweh for Yahweh is tough. Sing praises unto his name, for it is pleasant. May this scripture barak you and help you. Shalom, shalom. All right, shalom, shalom again, daughters of Tezion. This afternoon, the teaching will be the riches of the good, and the Hebrew term for good is tov, the good wife that brings favor. Mishli, Proverbs 18.22, whoso finds, whoso finds a wife, finds a good thing and obtains favor of Almighty Yah. Hallelujah. I was instructed by Rehab Dawid, Mayish, to break down each aspect of a good wife. And daughters, I know sometimes we think, well, the way we were brought up, that we know how to be a good wife. But if it's not according to the Torah truth, then we don't know. You know, my upbringing, I had a mother and a father. But because my father was so abusive towards my mother, we had to separate. So my mother moved to another town. And she took us along, but my grandparents were always involved in my life. And my grandparents, my grandfather, my grandmother, they lived with each other until they both died when they slept away. But can I tell you, whatever my grandmother wanted, and it was in my grandfather's power to give, he would give it to her. But there was something about my mother. My mother had an older sister, and she had a baby sister. But my grandparents always cleaved to my mother for some reason or another. So... I still saw the example of a husband and a wife, but it was not according to the Torah. Because not only does the husband have to be an example, but the wife also. And they must learn to honor one the other, to cherish one the other, and the wife must learn to reverence her ish, her husband. So me not having an example Though I thought that they were examples, as you see little bits and pieces, they didn't do this and they didn't do that. And they came up the Baptist way, but in according to Torah, you must come up by keeping the commandments and the statutes of Almighty Yah. He didn't tell us to be a Baptist, a Methodist, Pentecostal, Jehovah Witness, Seventh-day Adventist. He says, keep my commandments. And my statutes. That's what Yah command us to do. So there's no title. I, Yah said I came to a people. And he came to a people with the skin color like mine. He came to a Hebrew people. Abraham was not a Caucasian man. He was a Hebrew man. So as Yah sets patterns and examples in our lives, we must follow. Hallelujah. So we want to ex examine the scriptures. And we want to examine one word, just one word, find, F-I-N-D. And we want to find it according to the Torah. This will be the first phase 
of the teaching to the daughters of Tizion. Fine. Find a wife. And daughters, we do. If you, if you are married and you don't know how to truly be a wife, this teaching, I pray, by the power of Yahshua HaMashiach, may it help you, may it give you the strength you need to become a true wife to your own husband. The word find means to secure, to get, be recognized, to be in the possession of, to prove to be, to obtain. After searching comes up to find a thing sought for with effort, recognize, detect, to meet. So daughters, the only way you're going to really understand how to find, we must hear Torah truth. And once we hear this Torah truth, and we turn from our corrupt ways, this truth will find you. And it will operate in you because you're going to be a hearer of this truth. So Torah gives us an example. We're going to start in Lucas, Luke chapter 15, verse 8. It says, Either what woman, having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, does not light a candle, and sweep the house, and seek diligently till she finds it. So when this woman, when she lights the candle, she hears this truth. And this truth, there's a light that will go off in her mind. And she realizes that I'm not walking as a true daughter of to Zion. I'm not keeping the commandments because Torah tells me what I must do. I've heard the messenger. Now I realize that I'm vile and I'm unclean and I'm not walking in truth. Daughters, you can't walk in truth looking like the world, desiring the lust of the world. So once you come to the knowledge of this truth, you must start cleaning your house. She swept the house. So that means you must sweep out all the vile things in your heart. You're not going to do it all in one shot. There's steps that you must take. As you hear this truth, there's steps you must take to empty yourself out, to purge your things of every unclean way before Almighty Yah. And can I tell you, daughters, when I started walking this way, I was 22 years old. When I realized this light, Yahshua shined in my heart. I heard the messenger, and it caused me to realize how vile and how unclean I was. And can I tell you, I didn't get upset with Almighty Yah. I just was giving him, told out, thanking him for saving a vile individual like me. And by me walking this walk and obeying the commandments of Almighty Yah, Yah brought my mother in. And if you would think, well, the mother has to do right, then the daughter. Well, no. By my ways of striving to do what's right, my mother saw and she knew that there was a difference about me that she had never seen before. Hallelujah. We didn't understand this truth. Yes, my mother read the Torah every day, but she didn't know how to live it. But I told her, Yah, giving him thanks for bringing her in. Even if he hadn't brought her in, I would still give Almighty Yah Torah because he saved me. You can't save your family daughters. Yah does the choosing. And I told her, Yah, for choosing me, that I strive every day to be an example. Not my will, Yah, but your will be done. Hallelujah. Can I tell you, this song has been on my heart all day. All day. And I just want to sing a little bit of it. And you that were raised in, uh, that were coming up in, I say, in the 1960, 64, 65, you know this song. Lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring. Ring with the harmony of living. 
liberty. Let our rejoicing rise high as the listening skies. Let us march on to victory is won. Hallelujah. So daughters, I'm going to march on to victory is won. I'm going to be faithful unto Almighty Yahweh in my living, in my thinking, my not looking like the world, my not being like the world, but I want to be like a, a daughter of Zion. So when others see me, they say, there is something different about her. There is something different about her dress. No, my body parts are for only my ish to see. No other man, so I don't want to draw attention to other men that they're looking at my breasts or, yeah, I've got big legs. Are they looking at my big legs? I don't want no other man drawn to me. Only my ish. Rayak Dawi. So we, as the daughters of Zion, as we learn this truth, we must clean the house. We must cover ourselves. When you say, well, it's hot, what do you do when it gets hot? What do I do? Well, when I get too hot, I'll just pick up a fan. Or I go sit in a room where the air condition is. That's what I do. But the more flesh you expose, the hotter you shall be. So I cover myself as a daughter of Zion. And I don't want any other man looking at me but Rayak. Let us get back to the scriptures. Now I read Lucas 15 and 8. Let me go to 15 and 9. It says, and when she has found it, when this woman has swept the house and she has found it, Yahshua HaMashiach, she calls her friends and her neighbors together, saying, rejoice with me, rejoice with me, for I have found the piece of silver that was lost. And that precious piece of silver that she found was Yahshua HaMashiach. When I found him, daughters, I was so excited. I was so happy in my being. Why did he choose someone like me? There was nothing beautiful about me. There was nothing excellent about my ways. I was a mean little girl growing up. I had my father's spirit. He was a mean man. So I had my father's spirit. But when Yahshua came in and showed me how vile and filthy and wretched I was, he showed me how to live this truth by picking up the daily legend, Yahshua HaMashiach. See, people will say Yahshua has come to do away with the book, but that's not the truth. Yahshua came to fulfill the volume of this book. So he kept the feast days. He honored Almighty Yah in his daily living. He ate only the clean things. He fasted, he prayed, so the example is before us. They call it the New Testament. He came to fulfill the volume of this book, daughters, and he did it too. So if he did it, I can do it, and so can you. So I praise Yah for sending Yahshua HaMashiach to save a wretch like me. So I can lift my voice every day and sing, and I shall march Till it's time for me to go home. Because victory is mine. Hallelujah. A precious man of Yahweh. His, he, his desire is to have a virtuous wife. How will he know what a virtuous wife is? Well if he is a true man of Yah. By keeping his mind clean. Him seeking Yah with prayer. And fasting. He will, he will know when he sees a virtuous wife. Not because, of her, not because of her much speaking, or because she's so vivacious, or because of her large this, or because of her... No, he will know because she studies to be quiet. She's not trying to be seen. Can I tell you, when you find a woman is always loud, she's always trying to get the attention of other men, that's not a precious wife. It's not. But that quiet one that you think is simple and doesn't know much, that's the one that you that's the one that you look for. Hallelujah. So let me go to Proverbs 
31 and 10. It says, Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. Proverbs 31 and 10. So when you find that virtuous woman, and all the rubies that you have, that you have gathered and put your money to buy, she's far above that. Hallelujah. So when a righteous man is truly looking for a virtuous woman, he doesn't want a woman that everybody slept with. He don't want every woman a woman that when every man walks past her, he knows her by name. He wants that quiet individual that's willing to obey the Torah, even if she doesn't know it like she should know it. He can instruct her in his truth. He won't have any uh, problems with her matching him word for word. She'll just learn to humble herself. She'll learn how to reverence him. And when you truly learn how to reverence your ish, you will truly know how to love him. Hallelujah. It says, what is a virtuous woman? A daughter of strength, might, wealth, wealth in her understanding. She is strong, rich of the knowledge of her beauty. Your beauty is when you know how to cover yourself. She has the recourses of the substance to be a wife. She's willing to wait until that righteous man comes for her. Hallelujah. You know, even when people talk about the way we dress here to Shua, I heard one say that we look like slaves. Well, our ancestors were slaves. And can I tell you, even if it wasn't but one among them that could read, they would always pick up this book and instruct the people, our slave ancestors, how they should govern themselves. The women covered themselves. They covered their heads. They weren't loud in whatever the man said. The man was the final arbiter. So if anybody say, I look like a slave, it's a blessing. Todiya, thank you so kindly. I don't mind looking like my ancestors. Being disciplined and knowing how to honor Almighty Yah. Hallelujah. Boaz inquired of Ruth. He understood the personality of a virtuous daughter. Now in the book of Ruth, Boaz was a man, he had a man of substance, but he didn't have a wife. And can I tell you, he knew the Torah. He had been around many women, and he knew lustful women when he was around them. He knew to avoid that one, because daughters, a whore is a deep ditch. And any time a man falls into that, hardly will he come up out of it. A whore will corrupt everything about a righteous man. So that's why a righteous man must wait on Yah for his virtuous wife. So we want to go to the book of Ruth, Ruth, chapter 3, verse 7. And when Boaz had eaten and drunk, and his heart was merry, he went to lie down at the end of a heap of corn because he was weary from his hard day of labor. And Ruth, a virtuous daughter of Tezion, she came in softly and uncovered his feet. She removed his shoes and she laid herself down and she covered his feet with her skirt. Verse 8. And it came to pass at midnight that the man was startled, Boaz was startled, and he turned himself, and behold, he said, a woman lay at my feet. And he said, who are you? And she answered, I am Ruth, your handmaid. I spread my skirt over your feet, for you are a near kinsman. And Boaz knew that this was not a woman of the evening, he knew that. He had seen Ruth. He had seen her glean the fields. He had seen her with her mother-in-law. And not, he knew that she wasn't a, a greedy woman because she looked out for a mother-in-law. 
even though her husband was deceased. So he knew that this was a righteous woman, a woman that knew her place. And he said, Bless, Barak be you of Yahweh, my daughter, for you have shown more kindness in the latter end than at the beginning. And as much as you follow, not after young men, whether they be poor or rich. So see, right away, he knew that she wasn't a harlot. She wasn't running after every man laying under every bay tree, whether rich or poor. She would glean the fields to make sure there was enough food for not only herself, but her mother-in-law also. And now, my daughter, this is still Boaz speaking, fear not, I will do to you all that you require. For all the city of my people do know that you are a virtuous woman. Hallelujah. So he knew that she was virtuous by her labor, by the way she dressed. He probably even saw her in the tabernacle, praising Almighty Yah for all the tough things that he has done and that he was going to do for her. Hallelujah. So daughters, until you get to that place, it's not a hard place to get to. We must learn to humble ourselves, pick up our daily lecture, and hear the messenger. You're not going to get this by just studying the book on your own. You must hear the messenger. Over the years, daughters, it's not because what I have done or inquired of myself, I hear the messenger. And by me hearing the messenger and going back over these scriptures, that I hear on the Shabbat day, I'm blessed. I don't fight and kick and try to see how I can change it to make it appease me. The Creator has made me for His pleasure. So why shouldn't I be obedient according to this truth? The Creator has made me. He has taken me to the potter's house to break up this old foul ground, to make me a daughter unto His pleasure. And that's what we must desire. Not my will, y'all, but your will be done in my life as I strive daily to do that which is pleasing before you. Daughters, we must be examples to each other. And we must understand it is the will of Almighty Yah that we change the way that we think, the way that we act, and we must be willing to work with our hands. You know, I meet many women over, the, I've met women, many women over these years. And when there's one that's always making an excuse, they're not going to change. Well, I would, but I could, but I can't. My husband won't let. So those women that I've met over these years that always make excuses, they don't want to change. They don't. So I told her, y'all, that he put that desire in my heart that I hear, that I strive to obey every day. You can't do right this week and then turn around and do wicked the next day and the week after that and the week you must strive every day to do what is willing and pleasing before Almighty Yah every day. Hallelujah. He said, what is a virtuous daughter? What is she compared to? Men of honor will compare her to this. I want to go to Maccabees, 4th Maccabees, Chapter 11, verse 5. Is it because we revert the creator of all things and live according to his virtuous Torah? Are we supposed to live according to this Torah? Or should we go another way? No, daughters. We must strive to obey this Torah unto death. We must arm ourselves up every day and we must strive to obey this Torah until our own hurt and to death do us part. And I know, you know, when you're not living like this and when you don't have others to encourage you, you think it can't be done, but it can't be done. I was once young and now I'm old. And I have great delight, even in my old age. I'm happy. My ish is happy. We have fun times together, even when we're at home. 
just our conversation. There's a beauty to our conversation. No, we don't talk vile and unclean, but we talk to each other with great affection. And I reverence him and I hover him much because, see, I followed him from day one. When I saw the hand of Yah deliver my ish, I have followed him ever since because I knew it was real. We can kid ourselves and think that we're doing right, but there's always in our conscience, you know that you're not doing right. You can deceive yourself, but you know in your mind that you're not doing right. So in order to please Almighty Yahweh, you must strive every day to please Him. I want to go to Shirak 26. It says, the husband is a blessed man. Blessed is the husband that has a virtuous wife. The number of his days will be doubled. When a wife knows how to obey her ish and obey toward truth, her husband will be blessed. He will live a right long age. He will be happy, he will be no ways tired. And he would take great delight in his wife. Even if he doesn't have children, he would take great delight in his wife. And he will have fellowship with other believers. Y'all will give him fellowship and companionship with men and women that love Almighty Yah. A virtuous, loyal wife rejoices her husband, and he will complete his years in Shalom. Hallelujah. So as we daughters, as we study our place as being virtuous, there are a lot of things we must lay down. You can't be haughty. You have to learn to humble yourself. You must learn to study to be quiet. And if you have an ish and you already have children, you have to work with your children. Your children have to see you doing that which is righteous before Almighty God. You can't blame the school teacher. You can't blame your mother and your father. Once you come to the knowledge of this truth, you must be that example. No, my mother was an example as far as knowing how to walk this truth, nor was my grandparents. But there were things in their life that played a big part in my life of how to walk discipline. There were things my grandmother would work from sunup to sundown, so of my grandfather. I saw that in my mother. So there were traits that they had that plays a big part in my life in being disciplined. I'm not lazy when it comes to work. And as you say, I may look like a slave. I know how to work like one too because slaves weren't lazy. They weren't lazy daughters. They made their own clothes. They cooked. They guard. They raised sheep. They, the men could build. My father was a master brick mason. He knew how to build. His father knew how to build. His father, father knew how to build. So when you all say anything about me looking like a slave, thank you kindly. I have no complaints. Hallelujah. I want to go to the book of Ezra, chapter 3. It says, she will be hated by those that do not love Yah. Now they're talking about the virtuous daughter. And can I tell you, you will be hated. There are people that would despise you just because you have on a long skirt. Because your head is covered. They would despise you. You know, Rayak and I usually go shopping for the community. We go to Tractor Supply. We go to Lowe's. Walmart is one of the stops that we make also. So I go to Walmart to buy fabric sometimes. So this was back in, uh, I'll say, the early 20s. And there's some of the older ladies that work there as cashiers. They know me. They don't know me by name, but they know me by my face. So one year, lady was asking me about the fabric that I was purchasing, and she was telling me how lovely it was. Well, there was a young woman that came up also, and she's always just despised me for no reason. And she was kind of on the heavy side. I have no problem with a woman that is heavy or overweight. Because I know that there are things and issues in our life sometimes that, that cause that. But the older lady, the older cashier was talking to me about how beautiful the fabric was. 
and what was I going to make? And I told her, a skirt and a blouse. And the young lady was such a nasty disposition. She said, I wouldn't be caught dead in a skirt. Well, I didn't respond to her because I wasn't talking to her. And she said it again, looking at me like, I never, because people of our hue have always been, we've been through many trials and tribulations. So when I see another person of color, I always want to speak. I will always want to show them kindness. But this young woman was going to show me how defiant she was and to tell me she wouldn't be caught dead in a skirt. Well, she would look better in a skirt than everybody seeing her private parts, her buttocks. So I never responded to that daughter, but I did respond to the older lady that was ringing up my items. And I told her I was going to make a skirt and blouse. And she said, you always look so lovely. And I told her, thank you. So even daughters, you're going to be despised. You'll be despised for your kindness. You'll be despised if you're trying to lose weight, if you're trying to change the way you eat, if you're fasting and praying. People despise you just for that. They despise you because they can't do it. They don't want to do it. So they just despise you without a cause. The righteous daughter. Hallelujah. They will hate you without a cause. So we that are virtuous daughters that strive to do that which is right, you're going to be hated. So don't get weary in that. You even be hated by your kinsmen. If you have a sister that's walking that's walking the opposite. She's not obeying the commandments of Almighty God. She'll hate you because you're not doing what she does. She'll hate you because you're not hanging out at the bars and the nightclubs. So you're going to have to take the ridicule. But can I tell yourself, arm yourself because Yahshua went through it also. I want to go to Ezra 3, 16 and 50. It says, so shall righteousness hate iniquity. So just the way the wicked hate your righteousness, we must hate wickedness. It says, and she, wait a minute. It says, so shall righteousness hate iniquity when she decks herself and shall accuse her to her face. When he comes that shall defend him that diligently searches out every sin upon the earth, Yahshua shall return. And every sin that has been performed on the earth, he's going to bring it up. So that's why we must strive to do what is right. He that is filthy when Yahshua comes, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. So Yahshua is going to judge this wicked, corrupt world. That's why we must strive to do that which is righteous. And daughters of Zion, we must strive to be virtuous. And every application of the word. Hallelujah. We don't want to deck ourselves like the world. You don't have to paint your face up. You don't have to wear five or six earrings. You don't have to let your hair hang out. Or wear another poor Indian woman's hair. Yah has given us hair. Remember Yahshua's hair was kinky too. We just have to love what Yah has given us. And learn how to take care of it. You say, well, my hair won't grow. What can I tell you? If you learn how to eat leafy green vegetables, drink plenty of water. I'm not just talking about a glass of water a day. Just drink water straight from the faucet. Drink water at room temperature. Can I tell you, your hair will grow? Yeah, can I tell you, your hair loves water? When you wash your hair, what does it do? Does it just draw up right away or does it stretch out? It stretches out. Your hair will be lovely, daughters. When you told the Yah for what you have, and you learn to take care of it. You don't have to let no other man or no other woman do your hair. You can do your own hair. I've learned that. Oh, I used to go to the beauty salon every other week. Didn't know how to wash it. Didn't know how to condition it. And can I tell you, when Rayak said, stop putting those chemicals in your hair, I didn't fight with him. Can I, I just wanted to be obedient. I learned how to care for my hair. Yeah, I got hair too. Hallelujah. And my daughter on the other side of me has hair down to her buttocks. So you're not going to tell me that your, your hair won't grow. You just got to learn how to take care of it. Hallelujah. Okay, let's get back to the word fines. 
compared to when one finds in Torah. One must truly see. When you find looking for something, when you're truly looking for something, you got to put everything else out of the way and just make time to search. We want to go to Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. So, it's telling you what to do. If you truly, when you're striving to do what's right, daughters, you get on your knees and you ask of Almighty God. You truly ask. You just don't say words to be saying words, but your heart has to be right when you pray. And Yah knows if you're sincere or not. You ask, you seek, and you shall find. And you knock, you don't get weary. You don't get weary going before Yahshua and HaMashiach saying, I need you. I need you because I am nothing without you, Yahshua. Did you hear me? I am nothing without Yahshua. So you pray, you cry out, and say, Yah, I need you. And we do. Every day, every day I need Yahshua to give me strength. In this body, in my mind. Striving to do that which is pleasing before him. It says, for everyone that asks, receive. So if you truly ask, you'll receive. You can't tell me, daughters, that you're truly praying for Yah to deliver you from any situation and he doesn't deliver. You're not truly asking. It says, for everyone that asks, receives. And he that seeks, finds, and to him that knocks, it shall be open. Every tough and perfect gift comes from Almighty Yah. So you must do the work. Just get on your knees and don't get weary with crying unto Almighty Yah. You know, with something in my life, <clears throat> and it, you know, my brother, my oldest brother and I, we were Close growing up, but as we got older, he went his way. But I did let him know how I live. And then I have a baby brother also that lived, and I share with him the way that I live now. I did. And it's not until he got older that he understands by and by. He doesn't try to interfere with what I do. He listens to what I have to say. We are at the age where we can listen to each other. And he knows that I've made a stand for Yahshua HaMashiach. And he knows that I'm genuine. He knows it. You know, I had two sisters. One is deceased. And the one that's deceased, she was a, uh, next to the baby. But we treated her more like the baby. And she knew that I was genuine from day one. She knew. So we have to make a stand for that which is righteous. And when I say make a stand, you can't let anybody, not family members, not a daughter, not a son, not grandchildren, you can't make anyone deter you from this walk. Daughters, if you're striving to be virtuous, you must be faithful and committed unto Almighty Yah. And if you want to be a wife one day, you must become virtuous. You must labor with your hands. You can't paint yourself up like the world. Because if you paint yourself up like the world, if you've got on your Indian hair and your makeup painted up like a clown and your eight earrings on this side and a, a, a earring in your nose and a hoop right here and your clown lipstick on, what do you think you're going to draw? You're going to draw a clown. You're going to draw an individual that will never know how to love you. He said, you're painted up like a whore. So that's what he's looking for, a whore. You want to be a virtuous daughter. You want to look clean. You want your mind and your thoughts to be pure. Because that's what kind of husband you want to draw. That's the kind of husband you want to draw. You don't want a man that's going to be unfaithful. So if you're unfaithful, that's what kind of man you're going to draw. And you say, that's not the truth. That's the truth. So help me, y'all. Hallelujah. 
So how a daughter of virtue receives and finds the, new, the nuances of becoming virtuous. Let's go to Shurek 26 and 9. The whoredom of a woman may be known in her haughty and lustful looks and her eyelids. Can I tell you, anyone can spot a whorish woman. She's trying to get eye contact with a man, then you know that's a whore. But that shame-faced woman that knows how to lower her head and cast her eyes down. Now I know we've been brought up to say, well, that shows weakness. Well, I am weak. The woman, y'all created us as the weaker vessel. The man is the head. The man is the strong one. He's, his back and his shoulders were meant to carry the heavy load, not the woman. I know we have done things that we can carry. We have created that kind of body that we can carry heavy things, but we're not built like a man. We're built to carry babies. That's what y'all created us for. So that's why we need to go back to the potter's house and let y'all break us and recreate that virtuous daughter of Tazion. It says, keep strict watch over a headstrong daughter. Least, when she finds liberty, she use it to her hurt. Listen to me, mothers. If you have a daughter, if you have a daughter and she's headstrong, you must be the example that she can follow after. You must. You must correct her. You must show what's righteous to do. Because she will open herself up to every green tree and let everyone that passes by take liberties. And you don't want that for your daughter. You know, you've, I've seen over the years how young women that had no discipline in their life and their mother was never at home, how they had five and six children and there's no, and all these children about different men. And you can label it as you want, but you know what it is. She's a whore. And she's had all these children out of order. I don't condemn that woman because this truth can make her free or she can stop doing that. But she has to have an example in her life. That's why the mother must be the example to instruct her daughter or her daughters. I don't want some stranger telling my daughter how to live. I don't want the school system and the teachers to tell my daughter how to live. That's my job, to instruct my daughter, you can't do that daughter. You can't be haughty and what I tell you is right. I tell you what is righteous to do and you must obey. Can I tell you when the daughter obeys her mother and her father, her years will be long upon this life. She will be blessed of Almighty God. It says, verse 11, it says, Be on guard against her impudent eyes, and do not wonder if she sins against you. Don't worry about her sinning against you. You don't want her to sin against Almighty Yah. You tell her to learn how to cast down her eyes. Learn how to be humble. Teach her how to pick up the Torah and how to read it every day. For this Torah is our living daily bread. And she must understand that. You may, mothers don't get weary in training and teaching your daughters how to walk this walk. You don't want her to look like the world. You don't want her going after every strange God. No, I learned how to take care of my little sister's hair when I was growing up. I did my hair, I had two sisters, and I did their hair. Yes, I, I taught them how to learn how to love each other how to share and to play with each other with the little understanding that I had. So over these years, I teach these daughters, you teach your daughters how to be beautiful. That's why every woman should know how to sew, that you can make your daughter so beautiful. Not the stores. Yes, daughters, we do shop at the stores. We buy items that we need. But when it comes time to making them beautiful, only you can do that. You don't want them to be drawn by the world. Because these young daughters today, 
their sleep with their best friend's boyfriend. That's what he is, a little boy, playing with toys. He doesn't know what to, he has no discipline. So he'll sleep over here, over there, over yonder, across there, and over the pond. So you must teach your daughter, keep yourself for your ish. You say, well, how are they going to know? You know, I, I do, and I have heard people say, how are they going to know what to do? But did you know what to do? You don't know what to do. You'll learn what to do. Y'all will put it in you on what's right to do when it comes time for that husband and wife to perform. You will know exactly what to do. If a 13-year-old can know what to do, you're not going to tell me a 20-year-old or a 25-year-old won't know what to do? Sometimes we think so carnally minded. Our thoughts are totally against Almighty God. Did you hear me? Your thoughts are so evil and corrupt, they're against Almighty God. So over the years, I have learned, be set apart. No, it's not holy, it's Kodash. The Hebrew word is Kodash, set apart, clean, different from the world, loving the commandments of Almighty Yah. We must learn to love the Creator because He has created us to be a people that we will, you call it worship, shahai Him every day of our life. Not to give Him glory, but to give Him honor and splendor. This great one that we serve, he sits high and he looks low. He examines your thoughts. He examines your deeds. Even in the darkest corner, remember he created the darkness. And when he spoke, let there be light, life came into existence. So we must understand, we don't understand how mighty he is. He's the one that gives you the breath of life. The activity of my limbs, I could not move my arms and my hands if Yah doesn't speak it. Not my will, Yah, but your will be done. So there's more to this. But let me just read, finish reading this. Shirak. Shirak uh, 12, verse 12. It says, As a thirsty wayfarer opens his mouth and drinks from any water near him, so will she sit in front of every post and open her quiver to the arrow. So when your daughter is haughty and high-minded, any man come by, any man that comes by, will be able to take liberties with her. So you don't want that for your daughter. You must teach her the importance of keeping herself covered, how it is important to only sleep with the man, your ish, your husband, and no other, that you are such a precious jewel that everyone shouldn't take advantage of you. You don't want, you, that's, you must, you must teach your daughter that. Daughter, I came up in an era, in an era, at my time with young women, they kept themselves like that. Women didn't really started to me, in I say maybe like in the early 70s, where the young daughters just started sleeping with everybody. And I didn't want to have to do that. I didn't want to be cool. I didn't want to be in the in crowd. I just wanted to be a wife and a mother. I didn't know how, but the desire was there. And by and by, I heard this truth, and this truth has made me free. That I could help some other young daughter to walk this way in this Torah truth. So, daughters, I'm going to stop right here. There's a little more to this, but I want to be obedient to Rhea, my ish, on teaching this, who shall ever finds a wife, finds a good thing. So don't be, daughters, if you're a virgin and you're waiting on your ish, continue to pick up the bread every day, hear the messenger, and it will bless your heart. And you'll be able to sing, Lift every voice and sing Till earth and heaven ring Ring with the harmony of liberty 
let our rejoicing rise high as the listening skies. Let us march on to victory is won. Shalom, shalom. I'm Ima Rafael, and we'll see you the next time. Shalom, shalom.